Hi, Jason. Hi, Samantha Dawn Titsolo. <laughs> Happy season two premiere. Can you even believe it? I I barely can. Sometimes it feels like a dream. We are I here. Know. We're back. We are now working with Broadway World. Praise be. Praise be. As Can our you good, believe it? Yeah, I know. Wow. As our good what? I was going to make a joke to Handmaid's Tale, but... Um... <laughs> cringy. I think there's a lot of cringy things to talk Not that Handmaid's Tale is cringy. The content of Handmaid's Tale is so cringy. <laughs> I know. It always makes canceled. me nervous. <laughs> yeah, fully canceled. No, it, I always... Handmaid's Tale, I'm always like, are we that far off like from actual real life? Oh, you know I mean, what I mean? During the, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> during the Trump years, I was like, we're going to be on the wall soon. <laughs> Jeez Louise. On the wall. Um, well, let's Lord just take mercy. a moment. Yeah, Lord have mercy. Let's take a moment to introduce ourselves because I hope we have some new listeners. So For hello, sure. everyone. Welcome to Survival Jobs, a podcast. My name is Samantha Dawn Tutsalo. <laughs> and I'm Jason A. Coombs. And we are both actors. That's writers, right. Writers. Hosts. Hosts. Podcast hosts. <laughs> and yeah. people who are working in entertainment. And we are so thankful for this opportunity to connect, to be back yeah. for a second season. Yes, for sure. Working in entertainment and also in survival jobs. Well, unfortunately, still <laughs> yeah. sometimes. <laughs> so we, we came up with this idea to talk to artists about survival jobs and their love of art and performing mm -hmm. and producing and whatever their art form is. Um, just because we were doing this hustle and we were like, Hey, this is crazy what we do. And so we just mm -hmm. wanted to, you know, talk about it and meet people and do the thing. And we're so happy. So hello. Yeah. And hello. And, and like as Samantha has said previously, we both had said, we're a sucker for a good story, an inspiring story. A and good inspiring story. I think that helps us as people who are trying to get to that next level, right? Who who have big dreams and big I goals love this to um, you know, to 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 hear these inspiring people share their journeys. And everybody's journey is different, right? No matter if they're from Connecticut, like we are, right? Or if they're, okay. you know, if, if they're from whatever, everybody's journey is a little bit different, no matter what commonalities they may have. Totally. Yeah. So welcome. Thank you welcome. for tuning in. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank mm -hmm. you for watching and all of the things. So we like to start off each episode sort of just catching up with each other, sharing a survival job story, mm -hmm. sharing something relevant in the entertainment industry. At a the little moment. mic check, right? A little mic check. <laughs> so Jason, we're still yeah. in the in the aftermath of the Oscars. So yeah, we were recording this and the Oscars recently happened and... I mean, could we talk about the Oscars without talking about the big moment, right? It's like what everyone's talking about, Cringy. Right? Like, speaking of cringy, <laughs> okay? I was going to talk about, I was going to say uh, Timothy Chalamet's little outfit. That was my big moment. I was going to, no kidding. Ooh, but no, no. Of course, we're talking outfit. about the, the slap, right? Um, the slap heard around the world. And oh, wow. Yeah, cringy, right? That's how you want it's to cringy. describe it? cringy. Yeah, but it's just like... <laughs> I don't know what I want to say about it just because it's just a lot to unpack. Mm -hmm. But what I will say is that we're all artists and that is the biggest night of the year. And I think there's a time and place for other things to be talked about and addressed and mm -hmm. handled other than the biggest night to celebrate people's artistic accomplishments. And yeah. that is all I want to say to that. I actually just went over and got my survival job sunglasses because it is like a cringy <laughs> moment. Yeah. That's hilarious. <gasps> Look at that reflection. Um, totally. And I guess the one thing, like, I don't, I mean, this has been talked about ad nauseum. And by the time this airs, it'll be talked about even more ad nauseum. So I guess the, the one thing I just want to say is like, everyone's saying like, they don't condone violence, right? I totally get that. I don't condone violence either. But like when you're passive in the face of white supremacy, massage noir, anti-LGBTQ rhetoric, hello, say gay, uh, poverty and bullying, <laughs> you are condoned, condoning violence. So I just want to put that out there. And as a reminder yeah. that we all have work to do on a bigger scale, right? There's a lot of stuff happening in the world today. We need to be mindful of that. So that's what I will say about that. And I mean, the Oscars were, were great. The, 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 I was very much enjoying the show I think the three hosts did an amazing job. <laughs> Do you see any of the big movies? 
You know what is something silly is usually I really keep up and I like to watch everything because I do mm-hmm. love to watch an award show. This year I really slacked. I didn't see Coda. I didn't see Licorice Pizza. I didn't see Belfast. I saw – what is Kristen Stewart in? Because every, everyone was saying oh, she was going to win. Diana. In the beginning. It was called uh, Spencer. Diana. Oh, Spencer, I saw yeah. Spencer. Uh, I saw – West Side Story. Being, saw. What, of course. I saw Being the Ricardos, which – I love I love Lucy and I love Lucille yeah. Ball. So that was great. Yeah, but no, I didn't see a ton. How about you? Yeah, I'm the same. It just happens. I know it's happened later in the year, but I feel like it happened so fast this year that I didn't get to see much. Um, but it, I mean, what the Oscars were for kind of were used as promotional, right? For people to go watch the movies after. Yeah. So I yeah, think no. it's a good reminder of that as well, that there's a lot of good stuff out there to support and see. A lot of historical wins. I don't know. I'm just... I, I feel bad that the night got kind of turned into that moment. And that's what everyone's talking about. When there was like so many wonderful, wonderful moments and totally. so many incredible winners, Ariana DeBose, and I don't know. Shout out, just, like big yeah, Broadway girl, here we are. Exactly. Yeah, that's amazing. The speech was so beautiful. And Her the gentleman who perfect. Yeah, the gentleman who won for Coda, I didn't write down his name because I know we we're gonna talk about it this much, but um <laughs> yeah, we never know what we're gonna do. <laughs> so Truly. wonderful. And yeah, it, it was inspiring. It's like you know, we're both actors, and I think no matter what you think about the Oscars in general, like you know, that's like what people think is the peak of of uh, a career in, in film, right? Is to be able to be on that stage and hopefully one yeah. day be nominated. If you're like a film actor and you have those kind of dreams, right? So that's just so special and um and so inspiring in general. I love watching them. Yeah, it's very exciting, but. The next part of our mic check usually goes to sharing a survival job story, right, Sam? Yeah, because we're still doing the thing. Because we're still hustling. We've hustled a lot. We've had probably, (laughs) probably, uh, what, 100 jobs between the two of us at least. (laughs) Uh, uh, Yeah, for sure, probably. But, yeah, you know, I, I love sharing our funny, like, earlier survival job stories of like a shocking moment that happened. But Mm -hmm. right now I would like to talk about how grateful I am because recently I've been having a lot of opportunities to freelance on events. You know, I love to Mm. work in events as well as all my artistic things. Um, So I've been freelancing a lot of events and uh, last week or the week before I assisted on this big watch party through Paramount Plus. That was happening in three cities at the same time, in Kansas, in New York, and in L.A., all at the same time to watch this big soccer match. I know wow. I don't know anything about soccer. I really don't know much about the soccer match to share. I really don't. Yeah. But um, it was just so interesting and such a cool experience to have to sort of like these three events had to be mirrored. So like the deliveries had to be the same in every location and like the setup and was that such a headache. I was brought onto the project pretty late on because it was like, how many tracking numbers can one person, you know, (laughs) manage? So it was fun. It was really fun. And I feel lucky, but let me tell you, I was not sleeping because I was working my survival job, working with you on this podcast, doing a couple of auditions, then doing this tracking numbers and like all of this other stuff until 12, 1 a.m. So I was tired, but I'm grateful. But like, that's, I think the definition of survival job, right? Like the hustle to do what you need to do and Mm -hmm. live in this city or wherever you live nowadays, no matter where you live or what you do, it's like, how many jobs can you have to like continue to pursue a dream? So yeah, I just, I guess in conclusion, I'm so grateful for all of the freelance opportunities. That's it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I am so excited. Sorry. And also something, everyone, if this is your first time listening, I cut Jason off all of the time. (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) I'm like, I'm going to talk. And then I circle back. Sorry, Jason, what were you going to say? No, I was just going to say, um, yeah, it's like everyone's journey is different. And it's, it's mm-hmm. nice that you have an opportunity to be able to be a creator, but also work freelance because sometimes you have more time to pursue your artistic uh, goals and creativity, yeah. having that time. And sometimes you're really busy, but, you know, you have that freedom in a way. So, yeah, as someone who has worked freelance a lot, um, I enjoy that as well. Shocking. Should we talk about Crystal? Yeah. <gasps> so our first guest of season two and our yes. first guest. Uh, as we have working with Broadway World is Crystal Joy Brown. She is a friend of mine, and I'm so excited to have her on. 
currently starring as Eliza in Hamilton, and she is so What's good. Hamilton? Oh, Jason, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Wasn't that funny? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Okay, next. Cringy again. Let's put... I, I don't know, Jay. I'm really digging, like, the shades for the mm. mic check. I wish you had yours. Next mm. time we'll plan, other than me just, like, thinking in the moment. But no, Crystal, yeah, we recorded her episode a couple of weeks ago, and I'm so excited for everyone to hear her. She's amazing, amazing, amazing. She's an amazing artist performer but she yes. also is like a really really amazing person and mm. we will talk about this in the episode but um at the beginning of the year uh she and i along with our friend lola shout out to lola made vision boards together for our goals for the year and on the vision board i put something along the lines of like survival jobs like taking a next step right i didn't mm. know what that meant at the time but we fully took the next step. So it's just, yeah. uh, and, and we'll say all of this, so I don't want to be too repetitive, but I just think it's awesome that she's our first guest after that. Let's tell everyone a little bit about her. Please, you start. We? Yeah. Great. Crystal Joy Brown is a multi-talented Broadway favorite and TV and film actress. Crystal is currently a reoccurring guest star on the new hit CBS series, The Equalizer, starring Queen Latifah and Christopher North. She is currently filming Power Book 3, Raising Canaan on Stars. While she is starring on Broadway as Eliza Hamilton in the Pulitzer Prize and 12 Tony Award winning Broadway mega hit musical, Hamilton. Yes. With five, five Broadway shows under her belt, including Hair and Diana Ross in Motown, the musical, her extensive theatrical background has led her to be a two-time Fred Astaire Award nominee and work closely with some of the world's top Oscar and Tony Award winning playwrights, directors, producers, and creative teams. Crystal also voices the character of Natasa, or Natosa, excuse me, in the DreamWorks Netflix animated series She-Ra, Princess of Power, which is now streaming all five seasons only on Netflix. She has been seen in the Disney live action feature film Magic Camp. She has guest starred mm -hmm. in NBC's Law and Order, which is Amanda's favorite. My favorite. Hulu, Hulu's Deadbeat, a Castle on ABC, Disney Sydney to the Max. And over the pandemic, she filmed two holiday movies, one Royal Holiday and Riding Around the Christmas Tree. I'm like tired just listening to her bio. Like what? <laughs> She'd be working, y'all. Yeah. Crystal also co-hosts the Apple podcast, How We Do This. Crystal has also helped to create the Hamilton Racial Justice Task Force, a.k.a. Ham for Progress, to use the brand and the many talents of the company to push change in our society and create a more equitable future. Damn. Yes. Let's let's do it. Let's show it. Let's, get let's Crystal. go to her episode. And while everyone's listening, I'll go take a lesson on how to read. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Crystal. Hello, guys. Hi, thanks for having me. You're welcome thanks. to you. Yeah, yeah, thanks for being here. Season two. <laughs> the first yeah. episode of season two with Broadway World. And you are the most perfect guest for this. So Why? thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Uh, yeah. And you got the first question, Sam. Yes. So <laughs> woof on survival jobs, which will bring us right into do you have a survival job story from your past that you like really loved that has positively impacted where you're at in your career today? Oh, gosh, we're going to start with the good ones. Yes. Um, oh, that's so great. Yes. Okay. Um, a good survival job that I had. Oh man, that's a, that's a really tough question because, hard, right? um, mm. I don't like doing anything I don't want to do. So that's like, <laughs> so it's like, if I am not Connection. truly in love with the thing that it's really hard for me to want to put my time and energy towards it. But I have to say, I guess like when I was in college, um, all of my friends and I worked at the New York kids club. And we, like every single one of us worked there. And so it was great because we all were there together and we would all come into work and we'd have to be teaching these children and sometimes babies. Like we taught from six months to like 12 years old, taught gymnastics, oh, ballet, okay, <laughs> six months, like bouncing, literally bouncing babies on a trampoline. 
Um, oh no! Just so incredibly hungover because it was college, <laughs> and um, right. with Yikes. my friends being like, "Okay, it's seven o'clock in the morning, and we are going to go bounce some babies or throw a <laughs> children's birthday party." But it was just fun because it was like, I mean, it was musical theater on steroids, and then you're also like dealing with. Um, kids and so it was like i was teaching ballet and i would be teaching ballet to sometimes three-year-olds and then all of a sudden they would just pee on the floor no <laughs> yeah uh, no one warns you about that really but yeah, yeah they I, gotta go those small no. bladders and you're just like everybody stay away you know and just like i have to go like carry this child out go grab a mop like have to hope that like other kids aren't just running through it um, so, I mean, as much as that sounds like a nightmare, it still was the, the funnest job because it was ridiculous. I mean, we were <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. And I was like throwing children's birthday parties with my friends. So. I'm sort of stuck crazy. on like a six month old jumping on a trampoline. <laughs> like what? <laughs> How? And we're like, apparently it's very room. good. For yeah. It's like, I'm so <laughs> terrified. Like I am absolutely not qualified to touch anyone six month year old, like six month old. Like I, I'm like a kid myself, like 17, 18 years old. Like mm -hmm, this is very good for their learning um, genes. Uh, it's good for them to bounce. I mean, I don't know what I was talking about. You're They're like, like this is what up. we do. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you're I acting. should not touch your child. Hello. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, give me your baby. I'm going to bounce them on this uh, trampoline for 45 minutes. No, like, and then I want, open, yeah, like, and I'm like, work. and I want tips. I want, you know, the more crazy <laughs> that you were as a coach, because that's what they called it. Like, I was Coach Chris Crystal. So Coach Crystal, you know, the more crazy, loud, and, like, boisterous you were, um, mm -hmm. the more the parents would, like, tip you. So you'd just be like, okay, Sam, it's your <laughs> Like, it's just insane, you know, just insane. You're like, there's no, like, two big, they're like, Coach Crystal is really into it. They're like, Coach Crystal. And I would throw, like, a pizza party and just, it was just crazy. Oh, Coach my God. Crystal wants that, 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 that Oh, coin. absolutely. I've that always coin. been a hustler. I've always been a hustler. I'm like, I know how to get the extra, extra dollar. Like, slip me that 20. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll I'm share like, it with my group. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. for sure for sure i think I going that. forward i'm just gonna call you coach crystal I right like coach crystal yeah. that's so good <laughs> yeah. ck yeah. Um, i guess let's jump into hamilton i mean oh that's my goodness like <laughs> the, one of the biggest shows of all time congratulations like thank you thank you wow. are you pinching yourself still like like yeah, it, you know, I had a really <laughs> weird moment the other day. I was um, deleting things off my Facebook, which I probably should have deleted long ago. Uh, and I was going through. <laughs> Is it, isn't that fun I when we do the social like, media cleanouts? Um, Ooh, don't want to get canceled. Don't yeah. get canceled. <laughs> I was like, what? Um, no, I was looking for something, but then I found, I saw, um, I saw a, a, a post that I made in 2013 that was like I just auditioned for Lin Manuel Miranda and and Tommy Kale and Alex Lackmore and I just pre like respect these guys so much and the funny st and like I was like I hope to work with them someday. Now the funny story about that is that like I had auditioned for Hamilton in 2013 and um, I had at the same time it was by the same casting directors I had been auditioning for Motown and they were doing like a six week reading uh, or workshop or something of or three or six week workshop of Hamilton and I had gotten a call back but I had also gotten Diana Ross and Motown at the same exact time so I was like wow oh, fierce a job for a year and this is just some reading you know they're like if they want me they'll come back <laughs> <laughs> That's some reading <laughs> <laughs> but the, the the idea is correct. Like jobs, you guys, you guys so I'm laughing, job. but I'm crying. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! No, it, I'm I, reading. That's so and, good. <laughs> but like, I I was like, oh, this this Facebook post of my of me is like trolling myself. But it was also like, oh my god, like I really. I was like, you got like, because, you know, you put it out there. Just, oh, my God, I just auditioned for them. And I'm so like, I, I loved In the Heights. And I was so in awe of it and, and that team. And like, as a person of color, I don't, I hadn't really worked for a lot of people of color, especially at that time. Oh, um, and sure. then I was, and also Motown just was like, really my first show where it was a bunch of black people on every side of the table. And I had come from a show that was, you know, all, pretty much 
all white minus uh, two other people. And so I was just so excited to be, you know, working with people of color and, and black people and honoring um, black lives and black excellence. And, and so legacy. Yeah. And legacy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so that was really exciting for me. But it was crazy. Just I mean, it was a couple of weeks ago that I saw this and I was like, oh, yeah, like this was a dream and has been a dream of mine. And sometimes you go in the eight shows a week of it all. You're like, oh, my God, I'm so tired. But like yeah. with Hamilton, with this particular show, with the energy around this show, with what this show does for people and people's lives and their mental health, even mm -hmm. because there is so much of that, like kind of pushing forward um, energy, um, especially through the hardest times. That's why people really, truly love to do like spin class with the Hamilton soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me tell you, I've done, I have done a Hamilton soul cycle and it is right. But hard, it is, there's, there's something hard. about it because it's just, it's, it's, we can think about our forefathers and, and stuff. We can think about the historical elements, which Ron Chernow is a genius and I love him so, so much. Um, you know, and, and the historical elements of it are incredible. However, the human element, the human tie of all of it, of us all wanting, dreaming big, of us all seeing kind of a, a different reality, trying to, to, to make change. And also like to me, playing, getting the opportunity to play Eliza, like uh, it's a love story for me. Like in my mind, I think Eliza like what love can do, what love can overcome and what love can build um, and what love can bring out of you is something for me in this character that I would just like, uh, I've been kind of blown away by. Yeah, for uh, sure. Um, I want to talk a little bit about going back to you saying how you hustle and how you're always a go-getter. Mm -hmm. I know that you have been hustling mm, recently with girl. the pilot season, with the self tape. So mm. how do you find the strength and energy to juggle doing eight shows a week. And by the way, like mm. eight shows a week being a principal role in this beast of a show. It's not like a 90 minute, no intermission. Right. And also, <laughs> Oh my God, that sounds like a dream. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> six. Are you guys looking? <laughs> yeah. Six. <laughs> <laughs> but then you're like doing 9 million self tapes a week and like a great job and like putting time, energy, yeah. effort into, yeah. because that's part of the job too. So so I guess the question is, is like, how are you juggling, finding the strength and doing it all so fiercely? Oh my gosh. I love this moment that I get to have of just full, full transparency because this week I, I lost it. Like this week sent me over the edge. It was just too many things. It was too many auditions. It was too many shows. It was too many emails. It was just too much, like too much on the plate. And I wrote my agents a letter and I said, every single thing that you guys are expecting from me for this week, pass. And that was four auditions. I passed on every single one of them. I said, you know, no, I need a week. I need a week to like just get myself back together. I need a Monday that I am not waking up and trying to film an audition at 9 a.m. I need a Sunday night where I can just lay down and like hang out with friends and not think about I have to be perfect tomorrow to do this thing. And um, and I just said, I can't. I cannot today. And I think – and I didn't do it beautifully and gracefully. I did it through a lot of tears and like a lot of complaining to several friends. Sam is one of them. Um, and so I, I – it was not pretty. It was not easy. And I did feel like I was failing myself and I felt like I was also being ungrateful because I'm like, look at all these opportunities you get and you can't even show up for them. Um, and I, but I was like, I'm, I'm exhausted and I'm not, I, I don't, I want to put out quality work. It's not just about hustling, hustling. It's also about like the quality of work I'm going to present, the, how I'm representing myself when I enter a space. And if I am going to show up at my job on Broadway in a, with a bad attitude, um, because I'm exhausted because I'm not taking care of myself because I feel like resentful. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to put that on anybody. And I don't want to do that to my agents either. And I don't want that to show in my self tapes or my whatever. I want to be like confident. I want to feel good. So, um, sometimes you can't do all the things. And sometimes you have to say no. And sometimes it's about going, what is the most important? And, and like, really, like, what do I envision for myself as we're doing the vision boards? Like, do I need to throw all the spaghetti and all my energy at the wall? Or do I need to be like, I'm 
I'm a sacred, amazing being. I need to stop throwing my energy everywhere. And I need to get specific about projects. I need to get specific about where I'm spending my time and energy and effort. And I think that that has been something, especially this week itself, that I'm remembering and relearning or maybe doing for the first time. I've never actually, actually, it is the first time. And I did write that in the email. I was like, I have never done this before, but I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm like nodding. And my agent calls me immediately. He's like, I want that confident girl like that from last summer. He's like, I want you to just relax. He's like, it's fine. You have done so much hard work. Mm-hmm. Great, you know, and and also like people don't understand like just because you're getting a bunch of auditions, like that means you're also and you're not getting the jobs, you're also getting a lot of rejection and mm-hmm. rejection is hard, which is what we're scared of the most, right? So I think that, yeah, it's been – I have really graceful moments and I have really, really ungraceful moments where I am laid out on this couch going, oh, my God, why didn't I become – uh, something else. Um, <laughs> and, something else. Uh, something else. I was like, I was like a doctor. No, that sounds hard too. Yeah. Um, I'm like, what's easy? Uh, like nothing. nothing. I mean, they're all hard. You know, they're yeah. all kind of hard. when you when you love it, when you're passionate about it, and um, yeah. it's it's all difficult. Yeah. But uh, Crystal, there was like so much talk of like like especially in 2020, right after like the George Floyd murder and. And, you know, Ahmaud Arbery, like, how can we all be more inclusive and diverse, right? Yeah. Um, so I want to hear from you, if you feel comfortable sharing, like, how do you think Broadway could, could actually live up to, like, what they what they want, right? What, the, what their goal is to be, right? To be more inclusive and diverse. Do you have any tips, suggestions? Absolutely. Yeah, this has actually been a big thing for me because Hamilton is my fifth Broadway show. And so I've been around, like, my Broadway debut was... 2009 and I was a kid you know like I was so yeah. young and I was just like okay you know whatever you guys say I'll do it um and uh there wasn't this moment of checking in with your mental health there wasn't a moment of checking in with um racism in the theater it was just kind of a, a known thing but you just didn't talk about it yeah. um and so with George Floyd's murder um, and then like what you know, what I consider the trifecta, Brianna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and and George Floyd, like it was just like the it took us over the edge, right? Um, and then it made us all look at our industries and our systems and how we all collaborate in this very racist paradigm and this skewed um uh, reality that's like really hurting minorities and particularly like in this particular case, black people. And um and and what happened was was that we started looking towards our employers. We started looking towards our um, these people in power and going, what – like, how are you participating? How are we also complicit and, mm-hmm. and participating as well? Um, and so for all of us, it started to be like a reckoning. I think really in 2014 when Trayvon Martin was murdered – um, the Broadway community started really talking about race because I was in Motown at that point. We held, um, I mean, we we did rallies, we did some protests, we did oh, a wow. lot to talk about um, that that really tragic murder of that child mm-hmm. and and what was happening. And so that was the moment where I felt like Broadway was really fun, like kind of having a level of awareness, especially Black people in the business, because we were like, "Look, we're here too, and we're not being really acknowledged." Um, And then there were some blind spots, even with an amazing show like Hamilton, they had never really said anything or posted anything about Black History Month um, on the Hamilton website. So it was like this moment, a a really, truly celebrated Black History Month. So it had been a moment where we were like, everybody needs to do better. You know, even places where you feel like they're the most diverse, the most inclusive, we all need to show up better. And Hamilton really realized that they had a unique situation where we have so much diversity in our cast. Um, and 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 we started calling upon our producers to be like, hey, like, what can we do with this amazing platform, with all your beautiful resources, with Lynn Manuel, who was like this beacon of light and hope, right? Yeah. Um, like, what can we do? And how can we really start making a difference? And and we created something called at the time it was Hamilton Racial Justice Task Force. And we were trying to use our powers to kind of connect with different organizations that were doing the work for um, putting up these, you know, talking about these issues that happen in black life. Um, 
whether it be uh, voter suppression or um, the lack of the ability to say something at work, not having like HR on, in the Broadway community, like that's just not something that's normal, like having an HR company. And yeah, HR rep, yeah. Yeah, um, and, and lots of things like that. Uh, and so we started the organization to, or the, or the arm of Hamilton to be focusing more on like the society at large. But as we were coming back to Broadway, we were like, well, we got work to do in our own house. And so we started really going like, and we had been doing like checkups and people, you know, big 500 people Zooms. Um, and and we were like, we need HR. We need um, an, an external HR person. We also hired a social responsibility manager named Andy Morgan, who's awesome. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's and great. he helps us to you know, really put the word out on all of the issues that matter to us. Um, but there's still a lot of work to do, not just in mm -hmm. Hamilton, but in Broadway at large. Um, we still, we need more producers that are of color. We need more women. We need more representation. And also the powers that be, like number one, they have to invite us in. They have to open the doors and let us in. It, and be genuine about it. Not just yeah. doing it because they we gotta let one, to. Yeah, one mm -hmm. woman in or one black person in or one Asian in. Like it, it's, we know, now we've talked about tokenism. We've talked about microaggressions. We've talked about these things. This is stuff that we weren't saying on, anywhere really except for in black spaces or women's spaces like you know behind so the closed door yeah so now the we're saying the quiet part out loud right <laughs> and people are on their p's and q's going okay well, maybe i'm if i do this it's sexist or it's racist and it's like we need to be aware like our companies need to be more aware and informed um and and look at the optics and we can also we love broadway we love theater we want to be a success have us come in and help you before you embarrass yourselves, right? Like have us <laughs> right? come yeah. in, like seriously. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you get all of the resources. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that for Hamilton. I'm saying that for like for everybody. You As know, a whole, like, yeah. I mean, if the fashion industry, like so many industries, all of it, have used, you know, a, 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 a black voice that they would listen to, you know, mm -hmm. and they can mm -hmm. say be like, hey, that noose around the neck thing ain't cute. You know, like, yeah. you know what I mean? That, like, yeah. th that person being, like, able to help. And um, and I think we're starting to realize. I think we're, we are doing better. But I think there's a lot of work to do. And I think that there is a lot of, like, sweeping under the rug. But I think it's up to us, like, within the theater and the, the people who have been here to continue to push forward like where we can go and what we can do and what we want to see. We want to, we need to see more representation, but number one, we really need ownership. You know, like the 40, 40 acres in a mule, we need the ownership. Preach, and we need to, yes. Yeah. We need to continue to support diverse storytelling and women's storytelling. It's so, so important because like, if I didn't see, rent or if i didn't see audra mcdonald doing what she did and being like breaking the color barrier so many times um you know playing marie christine and all this stuff and i'd be like that's a black woman singing that soprano like yeah. i just didn't you know that was not a thing right really, right so I, without having her without having being able to see these people i don't know if i could have been able to dream that what that way yeah. so we need to continue to push the envelope and push back um uh, on on just like well, this is Broadway and this is how it is, or this is the world and this is how it is and continue yeah. to push forward. And what I always say about inclusion and, and diversity is that like, if you think about the universe, and once again, I like to get like existential and like heady about it or yeah. meta, um, <laughs> but like uh, if you think about it, like the universe is ever expanding, right? Mm -hmm. Well, so is everything else. Like mm -hmm. we're getting more networks, more channels. We are getting more theater spaces. The theater's changing. Like we're expanding. So we should allow ourselves and allow this industry to expand as much as possible we can do it. And that doesn't mean we're taking away jobs or taking anything out of anybody else's mouth, right? Because that's what I think perpetuates hate. That's what I think perpetuates like fear and fear mongering um, and scapegoating is by saying, well, this person got something, Snaps. therefore mm -hmm. I don't have anything. And so now like they are the bad person, right? And, and that happens a lot. Um, so we need to make sure that we don't do that and just remember that there is more than there's ever been. 
the world has expanded in a massive way. And we have to see that as, as opposed to, there aren't just four major networks anymore. There aren't just a few theaters. Like there's a lot out there and there's not just Broadway. Off Broadway is a, a spectacular place. All of these like pop-up things that, that people are doing, all this different type of art. Um, we just, they just need to be marketed no. better. <laughs> no. So Retail. seeing yeah. as how you are killing it in Hamilton night after night, we thought we'd play a fun trivia game called Lin Manuel Miranda trivia. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, let me just grab my iPad. <laughs> no, it's fun, She's and like, a Google. lot of them are multiple choice or true or false. Okay, great. So we think you're gonna do great. We love multiple choice. We do. Okay. Let's okay. Her. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. We'll start with the first question, and sure, it's sure. true or false. True or false. Oh. The okay. first musical Lin Manuel Miranda ever wrote was about a dissected fetal pig. <laughs> True. Yes. Ding ding ding. Ding ding ding. <laughs> it was too weird to not be true. <laughs> Correct. Can you please elaborate? Yep. It was directed by Chris Hayes. Yes. No. MSNBC host Chris Hayes, <gasps> who was then a senior in high school, and it ran about twenty minutes. He can still hum the tune of the show. Chris Hayes said that in 2017. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. That's a that's crazy fact. When I saw that, I was like, what? Listen. They were children, right? Children. High school, yeah. High school. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh but my that's gosh. his first. And like, look at how far he's wow. come. <laughs> Crystal, you said you liked that you still watch Little Mermaid over and over again, right? Just like yeah. me. Um, what character from The Little Mermaid did Lin Manuel Miranda relate to the most? A. King Triton, B. Sebastian, C. Flounder, or D. Ariel? I'm going <laughs> to say Flounder. Oh, no. Sorry. Oh, no! It was Sebastian. He, he said, as a child, Sebastian, I related to the most. Okay, I totally read that. That wrong. was my Excuse gut. Me. That was my gut. Sebastian <laughs> was my gut. Always go with your gut. Yeah. Lin Manuel Miranda's name was inspired by a poem written about the U.S. Navy, a flower native to Puerto Rico, the Vietnam War, a 1940s actress, Lin Manuel Lacroix. I'm gonna say the. It's a hard uh, one. <laughs> I'm going to say uh, because. Usnavi. <laughs> yeah. Ew. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm Ew. gonna say uh, a flat. A a full. <laughs> a. I'm gonna say flat. Flat. <laughs> I'm trying to mouth the answer to her. You guys. <laughs> you keep laughing, so I can't read it. <laughs> Option C. Wow, good job. You didn't even say A, B, or C, though, Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> the Vietnam War was C. You guys, I really Wait. forgot that was even enough. Great work. <laughs> the poem was Vietnam. about the poem. The, the poem. name Lin Manuel is Diverb Di. <laughs> We can't read tonight. Oh my goodness. No, we are having recorded an episode laughing. in a while and we are <laughs> having trouble. The poem is called something that I'm not even gonna try to say. Jason, can you? I'm gonna try. Okay. Nana Roja Barami Ijo Lin Manuel Miranda, right? Lin Manuel, yeah. Written by Puerto Rican poet Jose Manuel Torres Santiago about the Vietnam War. Well, that makes sense. I mean, he's, he's so poetic. Like, he's want, like, yeah. yeah I want to so. say that you did a great job guessing C on that. So congrats. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. This next one I think you'll definitely get. Go ahead, Jay. Yeah. In 2015, Sweating. how many performances of Hamilton did Lynn miss? It's not multiple choice. It's just a wild guess. Did he miss? Okay, not the contractual Sundays off. I'm gonna say one. Yes, ding, 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 one. It happened the night like that the Jay Z of <laughs> and Beyonce came to the show. <laughs> like the one show he called out of, Jay Z and Beyonce went. He was sick. He said, yeah. like, it was the one shot, one, one time I was sick. <laughs> okay, oh. next question. Yeah, really good job. Oh, wow. great, great for this understudy, though. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, next. 
What TV show does Lynn have a cameo on where he rapped? A. How I Met Your Mother. B. Scandal. C. Two Broke Girls. D. Ted Lasso. Okay, it's not Ted Lasso. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Um, wait, what were the options again? Um, A. Not, not Ted Lasso. How I Met Your Mother. Yes. B. Scandal. C. Two Broke Girls. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with Scandal. No, just kidding. I <laughs> What would that be? Like, what would he, he would like be, in a detention be so center? So crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah, I he could be just a, he was just uh, in a ward. Yeah, he's just <laughs> rapping to himself. Yeah, B six thirteen, like in the in the cave. You know, when they lock people in the cave. I'm crying. I never <laughs> think my face hurts from laughing. I've watched the whole series three times through, and oh. always go back. Okay. Um, no, I'm gonna go with A. Great! How That's I Met Your Mother. Another ding, show ding, that ding. I have never seen, but it makes more sense for him to be rapping on that series than anything else. <laughs> yeah, Correct. Ted Lasso. We're scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man, yeah. that, my face hurts. And you know what? This last one, it's going to redeem everything. Ooh, uh, okay. I hope. What do you mean <laughs> redeem? <laughs> The shade was thick on that one, Samantha. Oh, excuse me. I heard you full out. I heard you with both ears. <laughs> My face hurts. My cheeks are going to laugh and start. Okay, Jay. Oh, sure. Say it oh, away. This, oh, this is me, right? Okay. Yeah. What was Lynn's directorial film debut? <laughs> She's like, I don't These know. Questions. These questions. <laughs> The game. Gotta oh, bring god. It back to the oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Hilarious! Hurt. Go ahead, give, give me. The no, no, this is not a multiple choice no. question. <laughs> we just expect for you to know the answer. <laughs> it was recent. <laughs> okay, tick tick boom. Oh, congratulations! Okay. Look, that man oh, has done man. so much stuff. You can't be like. He's never done this before. Oh, I know. I know. Oh, cool. like, I feel like I know a lot about Lynn, but I'm. I'm <clears throat> nope. Yeah. Well, okay, maybe there's it's more to learn fault for not maybe. like. No, 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 no. I love That's a good I, question. No, this is fun. I love the game. Thank you guys. <laughs> oh God. Thank you so much Seriously. for coming Crystal. on here. I on just laughed my night. lashes off. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. After you did a show, you joined yeah. us. So thank you so much. This was so much fun. Yeah. What a way to kick off this season. Week. Yes. Thank Before yeah. you go, like, where yeah. can people find you? Where can people, you know, like, see you on social media and, like, on the internet? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you can always find me at Crystal Joy Brown on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, I think my TikTok is only KJB. KJB. Yep, I, only okay. KJB. Everything with me is KJB. I'm yes. KJB Productions. Everyone at work calls me. And, uh, but yeah, so KJB. Uh, only KJV, TikTok, and then everything else at Crystal Joy Brown. You can also check out whatever I'm doing on um, the KJB.com. And yes. also, uh, I just shot several episodes of um, the new Power Book 3, Raising Kingdom. <gasps> Patina Miller yes. is also in it. Haley Kilgore. Yes, Patina. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we've got some Broadway. Michael cult. Kilgore's in it? Oh, sorry. I'm so excited. <laughs> H- Haley Kilgore. Oh, Haley Kilgore. Sorry. I do love Michael Kilgore. Shout Me out to too. Michael Kilgore. Shout out to Michael Kilgore. The Kilgore. vocalist of our Kilgore. dreams. And go see her in Hamilton, people. She absolutely kills it. I actually saw you as Eliza before we met. Yeah. Who wow. Knew? I know. And who knew we'd all be here together? How fun. I love it. Well, I'm glad that. I'm glad that we are here together. And I Me do too. like I hope you guys come see my Eliza. I, I really do love her. I love this cast. I love this crew. So please come check us out soon. Support live theater wherever yes. you are. It's very, very important yes. to support live theater. Um and um and, yeah, Eliza this is for, and yeah. if you're tuning Amazing. in because you are a crystal fan, as you should, and you're new to the survival jobs world. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Survival Jobs Pod and on Facebook at Survival Jobs a Podcast. Shoot us an email at survivaljobspod at gmail.com. Yes, and follow Samantha at Sammy Toots and me at Jason A. Coons on all of the things. 
Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> okay. Coach, Thank you. Coach Crystal signing off. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys.